exclamation point, our Penn State experience. A few blocks later, on Park Avenue, we're there walking. Who comes mosey down the street with Joe Boy? And he stopped, he talked to them, took their hand, and said hello. My mom considered that to be the most fitting exclamation point she could have asked for. Um, I think it's funny, too, that whenever I actually got to come here, State fan, knowing the games. It's always my dream to play here, but I never was quite sure that I actually could. Um, I came as a walk on, still am a walk on. And I wasn't one of those highly recruited kids where Joe would come to my house or speak to me or anything like that. Uh, I was somebody that he expected to show up to work, to work hard, do everything that he's done all his life. So when I came here, my first ever conversation with Joe Paterno consisted of two sentences. Very sunny day out on the practice field at the Bell Football Building. And he says, just walking through the lines where we're stretching, he says, looks at me. I wasn't even sure he was looking at me at first, but he said, looks at me and says, pretty nice day, huh? And I said, yeah, coach, it's beautiful. And he walked along. <laughs> it's a fitting start from a humble man and a humble beginning that wrote the story that I will surely never forget. The middle part of that story, like any story, had its ups and downs. Um, we butted heads a little bit, um, which is funny because I thought that of anybody in college football, of any coach, of any player even, who I would most relate to, it would be him. Um, he was an English major at Brown, a real lover of books. I'm an English major here, a French writer, a lover of writing, a lover of books. And in a sport where usually the only books you read are ones that have plays, having that common person, that common bond, is really, truly special. So I found it even more fitting when the last two sentences I talked to him were after one of the practices um, that we had in the two weeks, week or so, leading up to the last game he coached in Illinois. A little before he had gotten out there, read an article <coughs> that they wrote about me, and um, I was very humbled by it. And in it, I, I talked about, they wrote about um, the fact that I'm writing a story, I'm trying to write my own book. Um, real quick, it's a, it's a retelling of the story of Jesus, probably one of the best stories of all time, um, except it's in modern day, and he plays basketball. Um, it sounds funny, but I show you, it's cool. Um, just wait. But he comes up to me, this time he's on a golf cart. He up there, and he looks at me, and again, I wasn't quite sure he was looking at me. He didn't talk to anybody out there. But he said, hey, I heard you writing a book. I'd like to talk to you about it sometime. Maybe during the bio when we have some time. I said, sure, go. Sounds great. Now, as all of you know, the bio week came and went, and it wasn't really time.
upon the world, the sun is shining. Up beneath these clouds, it's bright as ever. And right here, if you look out where I'm looking from, you can see pockets of light shining everywhere. And if, if you look with the right kind of vision, you'll see not just pockets of light, but a whole vast scene of light. Because Joe Paterno, with the light that he was blessed with, let each and every one of us in our own special way. And if we can all live with that light, we can all keep that going. The love that he had for this place, the love that he had for these people, and the love that he had for this world will be everlasting. Thank you. Next we have Matt McCoy. Turner was once quoted as saying that you know, when he's gone, he'd like to be remembered for making Penn State a better place, not just for being a football coach. If part of what makes Penn State such a great place, though, is from Coach Paterno's coaching. Now, you know, it was his insistence on success with honor that not only taught each and every football player, but carried over each and every student. Yeah. 